Hello everyone, welcome to sequence 3. Now that we have looked at inheritance, self and lookup, we'll examine super. We'll start by focusing on sending a message in cases where super is the receiver. What is super? Take a few minutes to think of a definition covering these two points. What does super represent? How is a method looked up when a message is sent to super? The following principle is the same in both Faro and Java. The example you see here is similar to the ones we saw in earlier sequences. Super is used in one method. Let's think about what happens. For a new bar, there's no problem. It's the same process as before. The method is run. And foo returns 10. In the case of b new bar, let's look at each step. We send the message bar to the b new object. The lookup algorithm seeks the method bar, starting with the object class. It finds the method bar. It is executed on the receiver. This bar method is the one executed on the receiver. Now I have to compute super bar and self foo and add them together. We can do self foo. Self foo sends the message foo to the object self. Self is my b new. The only foo possible is the one in class A. So self foo returns 10. In super bar, super is the receiver. But the lookup algorithm changes in the presence of the receiver super. It will seek the method bar, starting with the super class containing the keyword super. Super is located in the bar method of class B. We'll be looking for method bar starting in B's superclass, which is A. So we find this method, and that is the one executed. Foo is sent to self. Self is always the receiving object. It is B new, so foo is sent to the initial object. This is the foo that is executed, returning 10. 10 plus 10 equals 20. In the case of C new bar, we wrote C new here. It is an instance of class C. We send it the message bar. Bar is sought in class C new. Not found. The class above is searched. It is there in B. So the B new bar will be executed. This bar is the sum of the two message sendings. We can start with the second. We send the message foo to the object self. Self is still my C new here. I send the message foo. The method is found and 50 is returned. I put the value 50 there. Now we need the first part of the sum, super bar. I send the message bar to super, always the receiver. But the lookup algorithm changes. It looks for bar in the super class for the class containing super. That is, bar method in class B. The algorithm starts looking up bar in B's super class, which is A. Bar is located here. This bar is executed. Self is still C new, still this one, always the receiver. We send it the message foo. The result is 50, and I have 50 here. 50 plus 50 equals 100. The next slide reviews the details of the lookup algorithm process for further study. Super always refers to the receiver. It's exactly like self, or this in Java. Likewise, super in Java is like this and always refers to the receiver. However, when a message is sent to super, 
the lookup algorithm changes and begins searching for a method in the superclass of the class containing the method being executed. Self and super are therefore fundamentally different. Self is dynamic, while super is static. I'll explain that further. When foo is sent to self, the developer has no idea which foo method will be executed. It could be the foo located in the same class, or a foo in an existing subclass, or a foo in a subclass created by another developer before the program is run. When the bar method developer writes self foo, he has no idea which foo will be executed. That's a convenient feature. It means developers can create a new subclass to change the behavior of class A. Conversely, super is static. When the developer writes super foo, he knows which foo method will be executed when the program is run. When he writes super foo here, he knows he is referring to foo in superclass A. Invariably, super is static. We know how the program will be compiled. Unfortunately, certain books define super wrong. The definitions make no sense. Here is a definition we found in a book. It says that super looks for the method. In other words, super prompts the lookup algorithm to search for the method in the superclass of the receiver's class. The superclass of the receiver's class. Actually, this is wrong, as proved by the example shown. If you take AC as the receiver, its class is C. The receiver's superclass is therefore B. If I come down here and execute the command superfoo, if the definition given by the book is applied, we would send the message foo to super, and the foo method executed would be the one in the superclass of the receiver's class. In other words, this one. It would send foo to super over and over again in an infinite loop. So the definition is wrong. In practice, this example functions perfectly. It's just that this definition is wrong. Here's what to remember. Self always represents the receiver. So does super. It's the same in Java with this and super. However, super changes the lookup. It will start looking for a match in the super class of the class containing the method that contains the keyword super. Self sends are dynamic. The developer can use them to extend the behavior of an existing class by creating a subclass that redefines the method.